a new decade for precious metals investing with Monex, featuring managing partner of CPM Group and author of the Monex Precious Metals Outlook Report, Jeffrey Christian. Hello, my name is Sean Brasny, Sales Director for Monex Deposit Company. I am here today with Jeffrey Christian. He is a managing partner and founder of CPM Group. He's also the author of our new decade of precious metals investing report. Uh, thank you very much for being with us today, Jeffrey. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, this report I know is fresh off the press and um, eager to get this in our viewers' hands. I um, want to remind our viewers it's only about 15 pages. It's got big lettering, uh, wonderful graphics, not a lot of time to get through. So uh, keep that in mind in regards to the report. Uh, but Jeffrey, right off the bat in this report, uh, you you make a claim of buy the dips. You know we've seen silver test down near that 26 level a couple times and bounce right back up towards 28. Uh, we've also seen gold try to come down and challenge the $1,900 level. Uh, just won't give us a real close under that 1921 or 1934 area before bouncing right back to the 1970s, 1980s all over again. We seem to be working through a little sideways channel here, but but uh, looks like we have very strong investor demand now. Is that what you're seeing? Well, we're seeing a number of things, but one of the things we're seeing is very strong investor demand, and not just in the paper assets the way we saw it a year ago, but also a lot of investor demand for physical metal, gold, silver, platinum, and even uh, you're not seeing a lot of buying for palladium, but you're not seeing a lot of selling. Now, with, with this investor demand, I know we have talked about in the past uh, central bank demand. We we're down at twelve, thirteen hundred dollar $1,300 gold. You talked about you know, central bank demand picking up uh, uh, the demand there. And, and now that we're up here near the highs, this is, this is more investor demand. And, and we'll probably see central bank demand start to diminish a little bit up here, would you say? It already has diminished. I mean, we've always made the point, you know, investment demand, private sector investment demand is the key driver for gold and silver prices. And, and, and central bank demand is a secondary driver for prices. But central banks are much more price sensitive than private sector investors are. So what you see is when the price dips down, usually it's because investors are pulling back from buying quite as much. You saw this in 2017, 18, 19. And when the price dips down, the central banks will step up their purchases. And then when the investors come back and start bidding the price up, which has been the case over the last six or eight months here in 2020, the central banks will pull back. And we've definitely seen that happening this year. Now with gold strength, we look to silver as, as playing some catch up on the price as, as of course gold took off to the upside and, and it took a little while for silver to catch fire and catch up. But uh, now that it has, uh, we seem to be holding on to this $26 level in silver. Back in September of 11 till about March of 13, we traded between a $26 and $35 number in silver before finally breaking down below that $26. Uh, you think we have some potential to get back up and over 28 and make another run over 30? Yes, we're looking for 32 to 35 dollars uh, over the next three or four months. You know, through the rest of this year, and uh, yeah, so we're looking for silver prices to rise. 26 has been a solid base, uh, and it may well hold for the next few months because of the political and economic uncertainties we're facing. Yeah, you know, we don't normally get you right before a Fed meeting. I know we've got the Fed policy meeting coming out tomorrow. Last time the Fed uh, came out, they made a statement that they're going to let inflation run uh, potentially past its targets. I think it's it's had a two percent target for quite a long time. You know, we we back in '08, you know, we saw the financial crisis and the Fed balance sheet balloon up to about 4.5 trillion. And after two years of quantitative tightening, which actually you were very instrumental in helping us understand it, it uh, during that two years of quantitative tightening, we only get the Fed balance sheet to a, down around four trillion, only to see this pandemic uh, balloon that ba balance sheet higher again. Um, I, during that whole time, we weren't really able to see inflation. What does it mean that they're going to let it run? How, how does the Fed have the ability to let inflation run? I think it's something of a bad joke. I mean, you know, 
with all due respect, and I do like the Fed and a lot of the things that it does, I think it does well. But the idea of the Fed targeting 2% inflation rates over time is, to me, sort of off base and nonsensical. And the idea that they would let inflation get over 2% is even more humorous in my mind because they really can't control it. I mean, if you look at what's happened really over the last 40 years between money supply growth, Fed policy on the one hand, and inflation on the other hand, what we've seen is that inflation is responding much more to the, eco the real economic trends in supply and demand of goods and services uh, on a global and a national basis, and much less on money supply. So, you know, the Fed can say, we'll I think what they're saying is not that they'll let it run, but they would tolerate inflation over 2%. But if you look at the real economy and, and the economic constraints that we have, and even with some strong industrial production and recovery over the last three months, not so much last month, but prior to that in June and July, you're still 8% below where you were uh, before the pandemic and lockdown started. I think what the Fed is saying is they'd love to see higher inflation and they would tolerate more than 2%. But if you look at the situation in the real economy, the real economy is, does not have a lot of inflationary pressures outside of the stock market, which is not the real economy. It's a sideshow. And the bond market, you know, the inflation is showing up in stocks and bonds in the real economic uh, world of supply and demand of goods and services that you and I buy and eat and consume and use, there are no inflationary pressures to speak of right now. There are a lot of deflationary pressures. And the Fed's kind of misstating uh, its hope that you could see some inflationary pressures. And I know you've been instrumental in, in helping us understand that it really doesn't take high inflation for gold to do well. It's just moderate inflation will do it, right? Well, it's really gold, gold rises very sharply if you see inflation over 7% historically in the United States. But it doesn't take that. You know, what you can see, for example, in 1982 is inflation expectations can pick up and investors will start pivoting into gold and silver in the expectation of higher inflation, even if the inflation doesn't occur. Uh, you know, we started to see that in, in 1982. Uh, there was a big increase, 14.8% growth in money, M1 money supply, and, and people bought gold and drove the price from 286 to $500 in six months in the expectation that that would be hyperinflationary. In fact, it wasn't inflationary at all, and inflation fell sharply late 1982 into 1983 and really hasn't ever risen back to where it was prior to that. So, uh, you know, it does, you know, gold does really well with periods of high inflation. Gold does well in periods of deflation. And when you have this gnawing inflation of one or two percent, gold does well, especially when in P investors think that inflation is going to pick up, regardless of whether it actually does. Well, Jeffrey, thank you very much for your time and your input. Uh, the information coming from our new decade for precious metals investing is, is out and new. Uh, you also mentioned that there has been some drastic changes in our world over the last several months, and you have made some revisions to the CPM statistics, and some of those revisions are also in this report. So please call Monex today, talk to our, one of our account representatives, and ask for your new decade of precious metals investing report.